The following feature presentation contains a content warning for discussions of ableism and some criticism of left-wing groups. Viewer discretion is advised. Intersectionality is the theory and framework by which we explain how a person's social and political identities combine to measure the different modes of discrimination and privilege. This means that many forms of discrimination and privilege will often cross each other on an axis. We can use this analytical framework to measure the ways in which many people are disenfranchised and it has spread from its origin in academia to left-wing praxis on the streets. Without intersectionality, civil rights issues and labor issues would still be separated from each other. Without intersectionality, queer rights would at best still be limited to decriminalization of homosexuality. Without intersectionality, left-wing groups in the US would have never grown after the 2016 elections and would have been completely crushed under the boot of fascism, capitalism and the American state. Intersectionality is one of the best things that has ever happened to left-wing movements across the globe. But I feel that we still have a long way to go. Not every leftist supports civil rights or cares about marginalized groups. There still exists a great deal of class reductionism where civil rights and issues like racism and queerphobia are swept under the rug under the banner of quote-unquote class unity. With that said, the general consensus, as far as I can see at least, is that you cannot support fighting against one form of, of oppression without also fighting the other forms. However, there are still groups of people that feel left behind or neglected by many leftists. Groups of people who need their support desperately. People that are often not really talked about in left-wing discourse and whose cause is just, you know, ignored. In my opinion, exists there a great deal of ableism in the left both online and in real life. There, I've ripped the band-aid off. Today I'm going to write about my experiences moving around in left-wing groups, both online and in real life. Full disclosure, I am an autistic, white, non-binary person from a Western European country and my viewpoints will be colored as such. It is not my intention to draw any equivalences between my experiences and the experiences of people who are worse off than me. I am fully aware of the fact that I still live a relatively privileged life. Furthermore, not every disabled, neurodivergent or even autistic person is gonna run into the same problems as I did. Some people will have never heard of the things that I'm about to mention and that is fine. Everyone lives their life differently, and we're all gonna have a different experience moving about in life. With that said, I do have experienced a great deal of ableism moving around in left-wing circles, and I've often run into people who are either unwilling or unable to really understand the root nature of ableism. Many left-wingers have expectations of each other that I personally think is either unrealistic or only serves to antagonize each other. There exists this tendency among many left-wing people to have a certain elevated sense of moral superiority, and thus we often feud with each other about the smallest of things. There is nothing wrong with having a good faith discussion of course, and emotionally speaking I totally get it. We want the world where we live in to improve. And we think that we have the theoretical backing to make this happen. So, whenever we encounter someone with an opinion that's slightly unorthodox in our eyes, then we go into an almost instinctive defensive mode. This is of course not helped by the algorithms of social media like Twitter, Facebook and YouTube, which rewards and stimulates this kind of aggressive discourse since it is just more profitable for them to do so. However, it has reached a point where there exists a lot of toxicity and quite frankly a lot of misinformation that is being spread around. This is not unique to disabled and neurodivergent people. There have been more than a few cases of people of color feeling alienated and offended by this aggressive method of discourse leveled to them by white people. 
The same also applies to queer people. However, there is one major difference here. People of color and queer people usually, not always, have their own activist groups to fall back to whenever things go south. Disabled and neurodivergent people, not so much. The main success of the rise of the left in the American world has been the strength of civil rights movements, like Black Lives Matter and the increased visibility of queer people in media. However, there exists no such movement for disability justice or support for neurodiversity. Due to the very nature of being disabled or neurodiverse, we are often unable to communicate our needs and our wants to the outside world. Which means that in many cases our only support comes from able-bodied neurotypical people. This is not necessarily a bad thing of course, I am very grateful for the help and support from allies that have their hearts in the right place and really want to help, but having a mass movement for disability justice and neurodiver neurodiverse acceptance is vital if you want to make any progress in this regard. The lack of a mass movement has also meant that it is a lot easier for people to get away with ableism as well. A shitty debate bro streamer can make racist remarks or use slurs, but they usually get at least some backlash from it. Though of course, being debate bros, they do not usually care about this. While ableist comments or opinions are far less likely to get challenged in the same way. And when we do give some criticism, the people who take issue with the ableism are often ridiculed or called scabs or accused of being counter-revolutionary. Seriously, just fucking stop with the LARPing already. This is not just an online issue. In my personal experience, I found activist groups in real life to be unable to really work with disabled or neurodiverse people, though in fairness they did at least try. Although many activists really want to help us, they simply lack the knowledge or motivation to really grasp and understand that a lot of activism is simply not viable for us. The sad truth of the matter is that a lot of grassroots activist work is work that is unsuitable for many disabled and neurodivergent people. Grassroots activist work is difficult, often quite dangerous and can cause mental health problems without a strong mental health safety net to aid people. Online content creators are often eager to tell people to do activism in real life, but what they fail to realize that it is simply not always viable for someone to do something like this. Someone with sensory input problems like myself is gonna run into major issues at a demonstration or a protest. Same with someone who has mobility problems. Not everyone is suitable for this kind of activism and I think that shaming people who point it out is not really a good way to deal with this. That is not to say that we cannot do any kind of activism at all. Personally, I think that we are way more suitable for things like sharing awareness about certain subjects or about direct action or social issues, but to expect the more vulnerable people among us to plunge themselves into the same dangerous situations with law enforcement and fascist talks as those who are more able to do so is not only irresponsible but also counterproductive and dangerous for basically everyone involved. Law enforcement will often target those they perceive to be more vulnerable and they will not hesitate to put pressure on those who are sus susceptible to this. This is not only dangerous towards the disabled and neurodivergent activists, but also for the people around them. In my personal opinion, is this a major failing for the left? If we really want to improve the world for everyone, then this is a conversation we need to have at some point. We need to realize at some point that ableism is just as rooted in our thinking and reasoning as things like racism and queerphobia are. Asking some questions about whether an action is harmful for disabled and neurodivergent people does not make me a scab or a so-called counter-revolutionary. It simply means that I have some concerns about the way many people in the left conduct their business and that I do not trust many of them to have my back when things will gain momentum. 
We are, at the moment of writing, in the late stages of capitalism. More and more people are realizing that our current systems of economics and political organizing are both unsustainable and undemocratic. There might be a point in the near future where we will reach a tipping point. And when that happens, things will go very fast, very quickly. However, as it currently stands, I simply do not have enough confidence in the left to say that they will support me and people like me. That is not to say that I am abandoning the left or anything dramatic like that. I will still do my part wherever I can. However, I think that this is a clear signal that we seriously need to shake things up and evaluate our norms and values if we want to go anywhere with this. Only through clear conversation, an open mind and understanding can we overcome this hurdle. So I urge everyone to listen to each other and not to try to stab each other with word shits whenever someone raises a question. Hello and welcome to the end of the video. Now normally I would in this part in this part of the video I would talk about my upcoming video and what I'm planning to do next. However, for this occasion I want to talk about something else. You see, whenever I create a video like this, one that is based on an article I have written, it usually I usually create the videos like several months after I've written the article. Which means that in many cases, either my opinion has changed or I feel that I need to clarify, I could, clar I could have clarified some of my points better in the original article. So that is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to call this part of the video the clarification section. Now, first and I think one of the most important statements I probably should, have ma I should make, and I've said this in the article as well, is that again, I am not going to draw any equivalences between my own problems with ableism in left-wing groups as with the people that experience something like racism or homophobia or transphobia from other left-wing assholes. Again, I realize that I am live in a still in, in a very privileged life in a relatively privileged position. And I don't want to, you know, say that I have it worse than those people. That's not my intention. I don't really think you should. You can even really compare these experiences with each other. With that said, I would be lying if I said that this article was at least partly inspired by certain online left-wing internet activities that were happening at the time when I wrote this article. This article is basically a combination of a whole series of bad experiences that I've had with, like like I said, both online and real life left-wing people. Also, this really should go without saying, but you know, just because I think that there's a lot of ableism in the left doesn't mean that I think that therefore the left is unsalvageable or that everyone in the left is ableist or something stupid like that. I don't really I don't really think that there are a lot of left-wing people I like. It's just, you know, there is still ableism there and I think that that, that, that is something we should address. That's basically it. Now, in the article, I also made the claim that there isn't really a mass movement for neurodiverse acceptance or disability justice. Before people ask, yes, I am aware that groups like the Autism Advocacy Network and that things like Mad Pride exist. I am aware of, oh, I'm aware of that. Um, however, I feel that these groups are really too small to really make like a major impact on, you know, like grassroots activism and other left-wing direct action. This is something, there, there are groups that are basically barely mentioned, if they're mentioned at all, and it's just like, it's not something that a lot of people really talk about, and I wish that more, more people did. I should also uh, clarify that um, when I talk about direct action in this article, I am mostly referring to protests and demonstrations, because in my experience that's like 90% of direct action over here. I'm not saying that protests and demonstrations are bad, on the contrary, I think they're very much necessary, 
but it's not the only form of direct action that you know exists. You have of course the solar punk movements and things like uh, guerrilla gardening, which is actually which are actually things that I you know I sometimes plan I plan to do and you know and things I am actually more open to and actually like doing more. It is just that because protests and demonstrations are basically the main form of direct action over here. It's why I often felt that, you know, I felt often felt useless in activism groups because, you know, I couldn't really do protests very well. The one time I tried, it was a major disaster for me. This is why I focused so heavily on the protest because protests and demonstrations are what is the most common over here. So, yeah. Basically, the point that I'm trying to make with this article is that I would really like left-wing discourse and left-wing groups and activism, you know, to accommodate their disabled and neurodivergent members more. Like, again, people are trying and like, like I said before, not everyone deals with it this badly. But I've had multiple times where I was shamed by, you know, other activist groups and left-wing people for, you know, being for something that was basically out of my control for uh, and for raising questions about that. And I don't really think that this is a, something that's very productive. And, you know, you can also, like, alienate people from, you know, the left for, for that. Also, like, our aggressive method of the way we discuss things is, you know, alienating for a lot of people. And, like, if we really want our movements and, like, our ideologies to succeed, then we need to be simply become more accessible in this regard. And yet, like, yeah, I know, I know, this, I know that sounds like I'm sounding like a liberal right now. And trust me, that's not my intention. But, you know, it's a sad reality. And whether we like this or not is not really relevant. So yeah, all in all, I still do I do still stand behind this article, although I do feel that I could have clarified certain things better, like I could have gone more into the root of ableism and you know what able, how ableism really manifests itself and given more examples like that. But I wanted to keep this punchy and you know, I'm kind of um, yeah, I like this uh, article I like this article still a lot. And uh, yeah, I'm glad that I make that I make this video now for it. So yeah, thank you all for watching and I will see you all some other time.